Building for an Ever-Changing Society Over the last century, Europe's building stock has increased enormously. Our growing cities are constantly facing new needs for housing, work, logistics and mobility. Still, buildings are often created with only one function in mind, such as a shopping mall, an office building or a block of flats. When societal needs or user preferences change, these monofunctional buildings usually become outdated or even obsolete, resulting in high building vacancies and premature demolition. It's often easier to erect a new building instead of initiating a long-lasting and expensive refurbishment. Demolishing buildings generates a huge amount of waste, which is only partially reused or recycled, often in low-end applications. In short, current building practices use a lot of material resources, but in an ineffective way. Imagine what would happen if we embraced a whole new vision of buildings, buildings as material banks. Seeing a building not as a fixed and final object, but rather as a temporal and dynamic storage of valuable materials and components. A building that can easily be changed in response to changing needs and preferences. A building that can be disassembled into parts that can be used again for a new purpose. For example, reusing floor tiles as a facade finishing, reusing windows in a new greenhouse, and repurposing copper wiring into electronic devices. So let's start designing buildings in a reversible way. Buildings that are made of components that are easy to assemble, replace, transform, disassemble and reuse in new applications, avoiding waste and downcycling. It sounds good, but is it realistic? How to avoid toxic materials and how to guarantee quality and safety of reused materials? To do this, we need to keep track of materials within buildings. So materials will need to have a passport, an electronic data record containing information on content, quality, function, past uses and maintenance, as well as guidelines for disassembly and options for recycling and reuse possibilities. Great, but where will this data come from? Who will manage it? How will we deal with confidentiality issues such as patents or private user data? This calls for collaboration and transparency across the value network of building owners, financers, designers, contractors, material suppliers, service providers and policy makers, for example by exchanging building information through virtual 3D models. But how can we establish a win-win situation between different actors with different objectives? Why would they put all their cards on the table? How do we tackle competition and liability issues related to using reclaimed building components? To make collaboration work, we need to identify added value for all actors involved, not only building professionals and financers, but also end users. Circular business models can do just that. One-time sales are replaced with long-term service agreements in which building products can be used and reused within the built environment or repurposed for alternative applications. These models should provide a continuous revenue stream for the producer while improving affordability for the end user. Additionally, by making building components reusable and buildings adaptable, their value is better conserved through time, strengthening the business case for long-term investors. In order to build our dream of healthy, resource-responsible and change-supporting buildings, systemic changes are needed. First, a change in design culture is required, supporting the future reuse of the building and its components. Second, we'll need to define, create and capture value in a different way than we are used to. Besides economic value, environmental and societal values need to be integrated in the decision-making process, especially when developing policy measures that stimulate good practices and discourage bad ones. Last but not least, 
we need to change the way we manage and share building data with professionals and with other stakeholders. For the challenges of today, there are no easy solutions, but thinking of buildings as material banks can open up new opportunities for a more resilient future. In order to learn about what works and what doesn't, we need to experiment. New instruments such as materials passports, reversible building design protocols, new ways of gathering and sharing information, circular business models and new policy measures and incentives need to be tested. Through pilot projects we can learn from success stories but also from failures. Are you inspired to embark on a new journey towards a circular and reversible built environment? Are you brave enough to experiment with building the future? Then visit our website to find out more.